So today we're talking Peridot, which is a drama written and directed by Shane Pax, also stars. It is his second feature film, and it co-stars Susan Harmon and Harry Haynes. We are Boys on Film, I'm Phil Murray, and this is Sean Vickers. I'm back. Are you feeling festive, hon? <laughs> Yeah, look, look how fat I am in my blue t shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to wear my Freddy Krueger sweatshirt, especially, it hasn't arrived yet. I've ordered one. I'm like yeah. a walking bauble. <laughs> Pull that cracker. <laughs> like, spiritually, like, spiritually, my inner, my inner essence is like a bauble. My outer spell is like someone in mourning. I love it. I love it. I'm all over that. So if you're not watching, uh, if you're watching not from the UK, if you're somewhere else, you probably won't know that it's absolutely freezing here. I mean, compared to some people, I suppose, that live in Canada, maybe, it's probably nothing. But we're down to minus two today, which is just unbearable. I'm sat here, like, rubbing my hands and wearing wearing all my winter woolies indoors i have to go out in a bit and i'm a bit like oh god i've got to go outside you're uh, just a you're just a man in demand i've got lots to do today bopping around seeing things doing things <laughs> <laughs> so we're talking perido so it's a christmas film of sorts isn't it because it's set on new year's eve no it's set on christmas eve quite a lot happens on christmas eve actually with gabriel and martha it follows the story of gabriel who is a sex worker it follows his story around some sense of self-discovery his i guess reconnection with real human beings and people and people who have a heart uh, and tells really his story about him and his friendship group over a period of time as you say um, a lot of it happens around Christmas Eve when he first meets Martha, who transpires to be a very famous author, who takes him under her wing for many reasons that we can get into. The main character, Gabriel, he is played by Shane Pax, who is not only starring in this film, but he's written and directed it. And I think he's edited this film as well. So it seems to be his project. I think he's obviously a talented guy. I mean, I've never heard of him before, but I was doing a little bit of research on him. So he obviously knows what he's doing. It's quite a modest film in terms of, I would presume, budget, but also running time because it's an hour. It just clocks in at just over an hour, doesn't it? So I kind of like that in some ways. I, I quite like the fact that it didn't outstay its welcome. Yeah. It, yeah, I thought that actually when I was watching it. I thought, oh, this is quite a short one. And yeah, you didn't have to take 20 minutes off it, Shane, which is my usual sentence. Yeah, uh, that's what I was thinking. I kept thinking of your catchphrase. <laughs> it doesn't apply. There were elements of it. When it first started, I was like, oh, is this a documentary? Uh, it felt, the tone, the script felt quite ad lib. Um, there were bits where there was sat in the back of the cab, which felt yeah. a bit like a Nan Golden photograph. Yeah. There were elements of it which I felt really like, oh, this is mega interesting. I'm kind of into it. And I, has he referenced that his favourite films are like Harold and Maud and My Own my, Private My Own Private Idaho. Idaho. <laughs> yeah, which yeah. I, now I've seen the film, I can kind of see that. I didn't think that at the time. I kind of enjoyed it. I, I, there was some little clunky parts for me that made me, that drew me out a little bit. I didn't necessarily believe in the relationships of the characters. But I don't know whether that was just down to direction or editing. It felt... I think what it was, it was conflicting because actually it was quite polished. I mean, the people in it, I don't know if it's just down to set design or hair and makeup or whatever. Everything just felt quite clinical, quite clean. Um, but obviously the the mood of the film is quite downbeat, isn't it, in some ways? And, and some, I suppose, some scenes are, are quite heartwarming but the mood overall i think is quite is quite downbeat mm. yeah i think you're right for there's a disconnect between i think the way it was presented in the story for me and you're right it was kind of really well lit and everyone looked kind of a little bit too squeaky clean for my liking yeah um and then you've got this undertone of the you know I was primarily three sex workers trying to like hustle day to day and get through you know gabriel wants to send money back to his mum like there's all of this stuff that's going on but there's a slight disconnect. I and mean, the cinematography was lovely, but there was a slight disconnect with the way it was presented that I think pulled me out of that kind of belief. Like, I was, I was a bit like, oh, this is slightly jarring on me. And then there were, as I said, there were elements where I was like, this feels really natural, like three friends chatting. And then there were elements that felt super hammy. 
and like overly scripted and overworked. Like I think I know which which scene you're talking about. Are you talking about the scene where he goes to Martha's place and she's obviously got the Christmas tree there and they're drinking whiskey. So they're knocking back the whiskey and then they start dancing around the Christmas tree, which is actually quite sweet. But then I, I just get thinking, he's, you know, she's relatively odd. And I, she's pretty much a stranger to him. He doesn't know her that well. But then I guess... The, the upside of that would be that he's living this kind of life where you mentioned, you know, he's he's kind of seeing humanity really again because he's going through the motions with his with his job and everything. So I suppose he does jump into that because she's quite a likable person. But that that initial meeting scene where they're on the underground on on the subway and she starts talking to him, that was kind of odd because because straight away he told her that he was a sex worker. And she said, oh, do you sleep with men or women? I th- I just found that really instant. It was kind of like, almost like they went straight in. Yeah. I think there's three things there. The first thing is he's playing with the idea of the kindness of strangers, which I, okay, get it. Second thing is she's an author. And so she naturally is inquisitive. So I think she's kind of a bit like, okay, this might be a story. This might be something which they're kind of playing with. And the third thing is, you know, you find out later that she is dealing with something herself, which in herself is making her look at life differently. So the three of them play together. Notwithstanding that, some of those scenes are really crunchy. And that element of the story does play a big part in how the film ends too, which I thought was quite a nice way of wrapping it all up. I mean, to, to some extent, it wasn't that predictable. But going back to the whole kind of clinical feel of it and, and how polished it was, there was one scene where um, Martha at one point says to him, you know, she get, she hands him some money and says, get yourself cleaned up and get a good meal inside you. And I thought, actually, he doesn't really look that malnourished or dirty. <laughs> which I thought was bizarre because he looks fine. He looks really he looked like he did like a clinic three-step. You know what I mean? <laughs> he looks fine to me, love. <laughs> so I think it was that that, that drew me out. Out, like you say you know it kind of drew me away from believing the characters but I, I liked the story and the development of the relationships I quite liked and it I think it had its heart in the right place as well but it just it it was that clunkiness that that drew me a little bit drew me out a little bit yeah I agree I agree and so it, it did skew my scoring of yeah. this film I'm afraid yeah me too um like I say, I thought the idea was good. A sweet story, but it wasn't that predictable. But yeah, um, back to the score. So I suppose our combined scores, if they're over 60%, it does make the film a banger. So is it a boys on film banger? Over to you, Sean, for your score percentage. I'm scoring it out of what? 100? Out of 100. Oh God, I'm giving you 45. Yeah, I'm a little kinder. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard isn't it because i think it's i don't i wouldn't call it a banger it wouldn't be up there no but i'm I, sorry I, phil but for me using my own pledges pearls it's <laughs> yeah it's 52 percent for me um I think, it's, your scores are a scream girl i'm sorry but it's like 57.35 percent like 52 like it's just like what algorithm are you running, babes? <laughs> well, I was just thinking all the way through the film, I kept thinking, right, I'm going to deduct a point for that. <laughs> the, the dancing around the Christmas tree made me lol, because <laughs> it was so funny. I mean, it shouldn't have been. I know it shouldn't have been, but it did make me laugh. So, yeah, 52% for me, which makes it a boys on film blunder. But I can see, you know, it, it's it got its heart in the right place. So I kind of liked the idea, and I like the fact that it's about people being you know, kind of saving others, I guess. I like the, I like the idea of it. I like the connection. Yeah. I like that they were both looking for hope in different, in a hopeless place, to quote Kelly <laughs> Rowland. Um, but uh, it's a blunt, it is a blunt, I'm afraid. <laughs> so it's called Peridot. It's available on demand on Peccadillo Pod, I think it is, their online streaming service. iTunes, it's there, <laughs> and it's on Google and Amazon. I've never heard of Pe- Peccadillo Pod, but I like the sound of it. Google's it. <laughs> A new subscription for the new year. More money to spend. Don't tell my husband. (laughs) Good to see you as always, Sean. Thank you, everybody, for watching. And don't forget to subscribe. We have plenty more films before Christmas to review. And also, we've got loads in the can already. So check out some of the videos that are on the screen around Sean's head somewhere, probably. (laughs) If I can point in the right direction.